I'm going to tell you why I like Tim Scott. This man is a gentleman. Even when he's in the midst of a firefighter debate, he's still a gentleman. He says things that other people won't say. He has integrity. You know that he means what he says. He's a man who understands history. He and his family have lived history. He is a conservative. He is a Republican. He believes in liberty. And I have to be honest with you folks. He comes under attack because he doesn't fit the left-wing stereotype. And yet, he's the happy warrior. He keeps moving along. And he keeps talking to the electorate throughout the country and during these debates. And whenever he speaks, I pay attention to it. Tim Scott, how are you, sir? Mark, when you speak, I pay attention. There's no question that your intellect, your fire, is something that stokes the embers of passion in my heart for our country. And I got to tell you, Mark, I know this is not what you asked me to talk about, but I got to tell you anyway. When you wrote the book, The Democrat Party Hates America, I said, hmm. But I got to tell you, Mark, after watching the dude in the house, I won't even mention his name, refer to me as Sambo, it just oh tells God. me that the Democratic Party, that they don't just hate America. I think Joe Biden doesn't like black families. Because when I look around, what I see is them using race and class to divide our country. It is wrong, Mark. It stirs my soul, and I can't imagine why in the world. They keep doing that to our country. Poor black kids deserve better than the leadership we're seeing in Chicago and L.A. and around the country. I got to tell you, Mark, you got me fired up. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Senator. Um, You say more in a couple of sentences than uh, many of these politicians say in a lifetime. And it's very important coming from you. Because there's no denying my race, your race, my faith, other people's faith, and so forth and so on. And the Democrat Party has you pegged. They have Clarence Thomas pegged. And I think of Frederick Douglass, one of my great heroes. He escapes slavery. He becomes, he's self-taught. He's an intellectual. He's a scholar. 1852. He disagrees with many of his fellow abolitionists. Not on slavery, of course, but they're trashing the Constitution. And he says to them, why are you trashing the Constitution? The Constitution doesn't perpetuate slavery. It's the greatest governing document on the face of the earth. We need virtuous people to administer the Constitution. That's what we need. And that sounds to me a lot like you. Well, Mark, I got to tell you, I'm a fan of Frederick Douglass, too, and Abraham Lincoln. And what those two men understood, it was celebrate our founding fathers, not because they were perfect. They were flawed, but it was the Constitution that was the anchor to absolute truth, and absolute truth is how we set people free. You see, Frederick Douglass understood that our Constitution and our Declaration of Independence gave inalienable rights. The Declaration says it well. That doesn't, it, our rights don't come from each other. They come from a creator. And amongst those rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, we must embrace our founding documents because they set people free. And the radical left, they're willing to lock poor kids into failing schools by having the teachers union stand in the doorway of the schoolhouse, trapping them in, and the DAs in these liberal elite cities unlocking the jailhouse and letting people out. Mm -hmm. It's just disgusting. It is disgusting. And you mentioned in the last debate something that almost nobody else would, and yet it's the truth. There have been scholars who've written about it. Even Patrick Moynihan wrote about it many years ago, the Democrat who became a Democrat senator from New York, which is that these social programs destroy the family, the poor, particularly the black family. They destroy the nuclear family. And they destroy the whole work ethic. And you, so far, have been the only one who's even mentioned that. Tell me a little bit more about that. 
Well, Mark, if you think about it, listen, I, slavery was a great evil upon our nation. I make no excuses. I pull no punches. Slavery was evil. No good came out of slavery. But I must concede, and we should all take a close look, that the black family coming out of slavery, we survived poll taxes and literacy tests and even discrimination woven into the laws of our country. But the great society introduced by LBJ devastated poor and particularly black families by making the exchange, forcing the man out of the house so checks would come in the mail. The result of that has been devastation that you measure in these big blue cities in crime and in unemployment, in uneducated people, and hope deferred makes the heart sick. It is time for us to tell the whole story, Mark, that in the 1960s, 70 plus percent of black kids grew up with two parents in the household. In the 2020s, 70 percent of black kids are growing up in a single parent household. And that is the foreshadowing for the rest of the country. Now 40% of white kids in working class families are growing up in a single parent household. If you wanna know if socialism works, take a look at the devastation around our nation. And I must stand up and shout from the rooftops if I can't reach the mountaintops, because I was that poor kid, Mark, growing up in a single parent household, mired in poverty. But thank God almighty, I was given the greatest citizenship on earth. And in America, you can rise beyond your circumstances. You can chart a new course that's rare on earth. Now, Senator, I know you have to go. Because you have to catch a plane. I want to have you back. But if people want to help you, where do they go? Mark, please ask everybody to go to VoteTimScott.com. I need your help. I need your help. And I need your resources because the radical left, they're calling me everything but a child of God. But I'm going to stand in the fire. VoteTimScott.com. God bless you, sir.